And this all leads to this point. And this is where worry, you have to understand, is ultimately defeated by the gospel. There's a bit of a law gospel distinction in this. You can't tell somebody don't worry and have it help them not worry, right? <laughs> if you're a worrier, <laughs> if you're perpetually anxious and someone comes up to you and says, stop worrying, does that help? <laughs> Like, oh, I should have thought of that. Brilliant. <laughs> now all I have to do is stop. Thank you so much, Pastor. It's like yelling at your kids. Stop yelling. <laughs> Why aren't you listening? <laughs> the law does not have the power to make you obey. That's a basic biblical principle. The law cannot compel obedience. The law breaks you. It doesn't empower you. Let me give you another example. One guardrail, don't worry. Another guardrail, love your neighbor as yourself. You know the Bible says that. It is a command. It is law. In fact, it's the second greatest law. Can you do it? And the answer is no, you cannot. And knowing that it's in the Bible does not motivate you to love your neighbor. It just exposes to you that you fail to do so. The same thing is true with worry. You know the Bible says don't worry, but you can't help it. So why does the Bible give you law? You have to remind yourself the Bible gives you law to keep you on the road, to show you which way you're supposed to go. Worrying is bad. Jesus says don't do it. Loving your neighbor is good. Jesus says do that. So there you are. I don't want to worry. I need to love my neighbor. I'm trying to keep the car on the road, but I fail in all of them. So what is the solution? You need something inside of you to change. And Jesus brings you to that with a question that he asks. And his question is, what should you seek instead? Is life more than food and clothing? Verse 30, the nations of the world seek after those things. You're not supposed to seek after them. Instead, what should you seek? And the answer is, comes in verse 31, seek his kingdom. Everything else will be given to you. Don't worry about food. Don't worry about clothes. Worry about Jesus Christ reigning on the throne over the world. Put your heart there. Do you believe he's going to come? Do you believe it's sovereign language here? He is the king. He is the king in this kingdom. There's, it's not a democracy. It's him. He reigns on his throne. And so you have to say, do I believe this or not? Do I believe he reigns in glory and majesty or do I not? That's where the battle happens. Put the battle on that field, not the field of law, but the field of gospel. When the worry is coming up in your mind and your focus on faith and the world pops up in between, says, look at me, worry about me, worry about me. You go to war right there and you go to war with the gospel saying, I'm not going to worry about you. I'm going to take my thoughts captive for Christ, for obedience to Christ, and think about what is true, namely that Jesus reigns, that he died for my sin, that he rose from the grave. That's what's true. That's what's going to consume my thoughts. That's the worst case scenario. I depart and I'm with Christ. The worst case scenario is I win. That's why something like the coronavirus is so interesting from a theological perspective, because it makes you say, I'm not in control. Do I believe that Jesus reigns? And then I read the first part of verse 33 because it reframes everything. The whole story gets changed. He says, sell your possessions and give to the poor. And you think, where did that come from? Let me tell you where it came from. You know what started this? This whole thing started by the guy saying, I need more cash and I need a bigger barn. And the whole thing ends by Jesus saying, you need to give more away. Don't be a hoarder, be a giver. And the only thing that takes you from there, it's, I mean, it's the gospel. And I want you to see the parallels in this. You on your own are sinful and you cannot merit any righteousness before God. You can't do anything to earn favor before God. You are not good enough to be pleasing to him. You can't do anything to earn his favor. And so you stop trying and you believe that Jesus took your sin and died in your place and resurrected from the grave. You have your sins forgiven and you emerge a new creation, a new creature ready to serve him with holiness. 
you can't stop worrying either. You can't do it. And so you put your faith in Jesus Christ. There's nothing I can do to control my life. I trust you. I believe you. Your resurrection means that the worst that happens to me is I will rise with you. And your worry starts to melt away as you lead a life of obedience. And big picture, you're so concerned about food. You're so concerned about hoarding. You're so concerned about tomorrow. If you believe the gospel, it obliterates all that and you go to giving your stuff away so that you get treasure in heaven. Jesus says, give stuff away and you get more stuff in heaven. So do you believe that? Do you believe you will get more in glory by how you serve people today? And if you do, then you are eager to do this. That's the point. You go from hoarding to helping, clutching to giving, buying to selling, selling to donating, striving to serving. You get there through surrendering your life to God's care. Happiness is not seen through the lens of striving, but through the lens of surrender. I asked one of our elders this week who has an immune deficiency what he thought about us meeting for church. And he said, that's, that's the wrong question. The question isn't, do we stream the orchestra? The question is, reframe it around this verse here. The question is, how can you leverage this unique moment in time to use your resources to magnify the gospel to those in need, magnify the gospel to your neighbors. They're as worried as you are. But you have verse 33. You're not the hoarder, you're the giver. You can only live like that if you believe, Philippians. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all comprehension, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus' name.